So welcome to lesson two of our study of optimization one. So in lesson two, we talk about the convexity of a function. So how do we show that a function is convex, right? Or what does it mean to say that a function is convex? And if not, what do we? Why do we? How do we say that a function is concave? Okay, so that's what we'll be focusing on. So don't forget to like the video, and if you have any question, you can ask in the comment section, and I'll be glad to reply. So definition, let's define what a convex set is. So a set X is a convex set if for any two points in a set, the line joining those two points is also in a set. Okay, so we have these two to be examples of convex sets and let's use them to illustrate what we are trying to talk about. So we are seeing a circle is a convex set. So this is because when you draw any two lines and um, any two points in a circle, sorry, when you draw any two points in a circle, you should draw a line to meet them. That line will always fall in a circle. The same applies to this figure here. You always get something it's always for within. But let's take an example of a non-convex set. So you see with this for instance, if you have a point here and another here, if you draw a point, you see we had something here which is outside the space, okay? And so it means that this is non-convex. Okay, so another example of a non-convex set is maybe having something like this. Okay, so if I have a point here and a point here, and I should draw a line to meet them, you could see that this part of it falls outside that figure. So it makes this non-convex. Okay, so that is what we mean by um, a convex set. And if a set is not convex, then we say it is non-convex. So now let's talk about convex and concave functions. Okay, so we first talk about single variable functions. So for a single variable function f of x, we find the concavity or convexity by finding the second derivative of the function with respect to x. Okay, so when you have a single variable function and you're asked to find out whether it is concave or convex, what you do is to find the second derivative of that particular function. And if you do that and it is greater than zero, then we see the function is convex. If it is less than zero, then we see it is concave. If it is zero, then this particular test fails. Okay. So in some books, you might see that if it is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, right? So one at a time, if it is greater than or equal to zero, we say it is convex. Less than or equal to zero, we say it is concave. If it is just greater than, we say it is strictly convex. And if it is less than zero, we say it is strictly concave. So let's take example. So we have these two functions here, and we are supposed to determine the convexity or concavity of these functions. So this is our first one and our second one. So um, let me yeah. Okay. So when we take our first function, for instance, if we should find the first derivative, we will get 4x minus 1. We should find the second derivative, we'll get 4. And 4 is greater than 0, right? So you can see 4 is greater than 0. So that means our function f of x equals 2x squared minus x is convex. So that's how we do the analysis. In our second function, we have f of x equals minus 6x squared plus 7. So if you should find the first derivative, you get minus 2 of x. The second derivative gives us minus 2 of. And this is less than 0. So it means this function here is concave. Okay. 
So when you have a single variable function, cf of x, it's very, very simple to discuss it um, convexity or concavity. Okay, so this is very simple. So now let's move to when we have multiple variable functions. Okay, so when you have multiple variable functions like f of x1, x2, x3, up to xn, we use what we call the Haitian matrix. And you know, a Haitian matrix is just a matrix of second partial derivatives. Okay, so second order partial derivatives. So, definition. The Haitian matrix of a function f of x1, x2 to xn is an n by n symmetric matrix given by, so it's a square matrix, it's also symmetric, and it's given by what you can see here. So, the Haitian of f of x1, x2 up to xn is given by the squared f del x1 squared, blah, 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 to this and to that. Okay, so take note of this. So now let's go to the test. So a function f is convex if the Hessian matrix of f is positive definite or positive semi-definite for all values of what? x1, x2 to xn. Now I know by now, you know how to find the definiteness of a matrix. We discussed that in our first video. Then test for concavity of a function. So um, if the Haitian matrix is negative definite or negative semi-definite for all values of x1, x2, xn, then we see our function f is concave. So let's solve an example. The example say we should find the convexity of this function here. Okay. Alright, so just long function. So since we have three variables, one, two, three, our Hessian matrix is given by this. Okay. So we are supposed to find all these partial derivatives. But you know the good thing is that our matrix H is symmetric. And for a matrix to be symmetric, it means for a matrix A to be symmetric, it means A is equal to what? A transpose and also A I G. A I G is equal to A G I. So that means this and this will be the same. This and this will also be the same. And this and this will also be the same. So that means you're supposed to find for these things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because there are three, you can easily find them when we get the others. So this is our function. To refine the partial derivative of f with respect to x1. And that will give us 6s1 minus 2s squared minus 6. When we find the second derivative of it, that gives us 6. So this del f1 del x1, if we should find del squared f del x1 del x2, we are going to get negative 2, which is here. And it is the same as del squared L del x2 del x1. Okay. So based on the Claridge rule in our mass methods course, all our matrix is symmetric. So Eig is the same as Eji. Then when you differentiate this with respect to x3, you get zero, which is equal to this. Then let's come here. So we are done with this part. So when you find the partial derivative of every with respect to x2. You get 4x2 minus 2x1 plus 2x3 minus 4. When you find the second derivative of it with respect to x2, you get 4. And when you find the partial derivative of it with respect to x3, this will go to 0, 0. You get 2 here, 0. So you get 2. 
which is the same as this. Then del f del x theory is giving us that when you find for the um del squared f del x three squared are going to get two. So now we have all the six things that we need. So we then come here and we construct our Hessian matrix. And this is this. And you can see it is symmetric. You can pause the video and find out. You realize that the transpose of it will be the same thing. So we can see that this uh, Hessian matrix is a symmetric matrix. And also we can see that all the diagonal elements are positive. So see, this is positive, positive, positive. Right, so you're now coming to find the definite, um, definiteness of it um, using the leading principal determinants. So our leading principal minor of order one is six. The leading principal determinant is what six, which is greater than zero. Of order two, the leading principal minor is this. A determinant that's the leading principal determinant is 20 which is greater than zero and of other three the um, principal minor becomes the same as the leading principal minor becomes the same as our um, main matrix and the determinant of that is equal to 16 which is greater than zero so you can see that all our diagonal elements were positive and all the leading principal determinants are also positive so what it means is that our Hessian matrix is positive definite. And so our function f of x1, x2, x3 is a convex function. So this is how we also determine the convexity of a function when it is multiple variables, a multiple variable function. Okay. So thank you very much and see you in the next video. So in the next video, we will then take an introduction to optimization since we now have all the things, the prerequisites. We, we have them to be able to study this course. Okay. Thank you very much.